my name is Ahmad Tharot. I'm a host uh, of the Arab American TV show. It's a show with an accent for those without one. Well, today we're very excited to meet uh, a filmmaker, uh, Algerian-American uh, filmmaker, uh, Anwar uh, uh, Ismail, or Simon, uh, as the French of course. Like, to, of course, yeah. like to pronounce his name. No, Ismail is great. Yeah. Ismail. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he was born in Algeria, in, in English. And he was the son of French professor and an act director and playwright. Uh, uh, at age of nine, uh, you know, you, you took your first uh, acting uh, in a film. Uh, I think the translation is Screaming Rock. Am I correct? That is correct, yes. You were exposed to your dad's uh, work, film, and all of this. And you came to United States uh, and uh, you got two masters. Uh, uh, and, uh, and you went to uh, to study cinema and yeah. film in New York. You've done a lot of things, uh, Anwar, uh, and uh, <laughs> you've been exposed to to so many different experiences. Thank you for uh, taking the time, also, you know, for you know to, to interview me. Uh, it's truly an honor to meet you, and I'm uh, you know I'm, I'm I'm glad that you know we're we're about to have this conversation. Um, just a quick correction with regards to uh, growing up. The the starting at the age of nine was basically simply in film, but not not really in print. So my my first acting steps, as you know, as I uh, or as you were uh, you know mentioning, took place uh, you know in this film that's called the Screaming Rock uh, or Sabhat al Hajar uh, in in Arabic by a former Algerian director. Uh, May he rest in peace. He, he died a number of years ago, whose whose name is uh, Abdul Rahman Bugarmuh, and uh, basically, you know, uh, they were they were looking for a you know a, a young man uh, or you know uh, to play the part of this kid growing up in one of the capital's ghettos, you know, uh, simply because there was a major uh, housing crisis, you know, at the time in Algeria and. Uh, this amazing director, uh, Mr. Bougarmouh, decided to actually make a film that was, you know, that focused basically on social issues. And since my father was actually acting in the film, um, I, I think it was really easy for me to get in. I didn't even have, I didn't even have to audition, you know what I mean? Well, that's, <laughs> you know? Cool. that's what the Egyptian called Kusa. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I, I ended up actually playing in the film without auditioning or anything like that. And to be frank with you, the the experience was really mesmerizing because before then I was simply like witnessing, you know, my, my father, you know, acting, you know, and and uh, uh, you know, uh, being in these different plays. I didn't really have that pressure, you know what I mean, as a spectator. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I found myself, you know, in front of, you know, what I mean, a, a camera, you know, being asked to like, you know, say certain lines and this and that. And but it was it was a you know wonderful experience because everybody you know was really nice and I was treated you know very kindly and so that was actually the, the very first experience I had um, uh, as quote unquote actor you know. You mean, uh, uh, your your father is your hero at home. Correct. Now you are acting with him as a hero in a film and 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 and, and, and how there are different roles here. Uh, the thing that's particular about Algerian cinema at the time, at least, mm -hmm. is that it had many. You didn't really have like a, like a specific lead. You had like four or five people. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Us, it, it's it, not like the American movie. It's just the guy exactly, that guy's yeah. carrying all the whole thing. <laughs> there you go. You know, um, uh, my my father has always been my hero, not only in in that film, uh, but also in in, in others. Uh, simply because, you know, first of all, I, I didn't, you know, growing up, I didn't really know that he was acting, to be frank with you. You know, I would see him. Yeah, seriously, I, I mean, I didn't really know that he was acting simply because, you know, I would see him on TV playing, let's say, the role of an Algerian uh, uh, guerrilla fighter, you know, trying to liberate the country. And then I see him die, you know what I mean, in the film. <laughs> and he comes back. And then, yeah, and he comes back, you know what I mean? And then I would see him, you know, playing, let's say, the role of an, insp an inspector, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, a, a, a police, you know, officer, inspector, you know, investigator running after, you know, these FLN, you know, guerrilla, Algerian guerrilla fighter. So I was confused at first <laughs> before I reached him. And, you know, of course, when he started taking me, you know, to these like sets and this and that, I kind of like understood that, you know, of course, they're just like playing, you know, that's what it was to me, you know, because everybody was like goofing around between yeah. takes and this and that. And, and yeah, so that's that's actually, you know, um, how it all happened for me. 
when I was growing up and I go to a film, to a cinema, sure. uh, the viewers, they don't just perceive themselves uh, as viewers. <laughs> they, they go on the stage and act. Yes, that's with the true. Film. That is true. Of course. With, uh, uh, my goodness, uh, uh, you are living in the most high t hostile environment for, for an Arab historically. And, uh, and uh, nice. you know, Arabs been portrayed in Hollywood in the, in the most uh, uh, non-flattering non ways, you know. And uh, so, you know, as far as like my experience in, in, in Hollywood in general, uh, let's, you know, let's start by saying that uh, it's been a mixed experience, really. Uh, of course, you know, with lots of up and downs, uh, sadly, you know, in Hollywood, you know, when you're, you know, when you have an Arab name or, you know, look Arab when, you know what I mean? When people find out that you're Arab, they, you know, I'm, and I don't want to say everybody, but, you know, for the studios, you know, mainly the studios and, you know, <clears throat> they tend to classify you in a specific category, you know, and this category is uh, a category that simply, you know, is used to portray the bad Arab, you know, the bad Arab, the, you know, the, the Arab that, uh, that's uh, violent, uh, that's, uh, you know, dirty, that's uh, uncivilized and so on. You know, uh, you're called upon, let's say, to audition, for example, for a role or something like that. And you're directly, uh, as I said, put into that category of, oh, you know what? You are an ethnic, you know, you are an ethnic. And that in itself, to me, is offensive, you know. Uh, uh, so you're an ethnic Therefore, you're going to play the role of, you know, as I said, you know, somebody that, that's violent, that's, you know, antisocial, so on and so forth. And that is something actually that I, I, I always personally refuse and, and uh, reject, you know, uh, rejected and still reject, by the you way. Know, so uh, I think uh, uh, directing was one way uh, to, to change all of this and try mm -hmm. to tell your own story. Correct. 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 You're, you're absolutely right. Um, I, I basically uh, came to Hollywood with the idea of directing, you know, films. Mm -hmm. um, uh, of course, you can direct as soon as, let's say, you finish school. Sure. But uh, you, you know, you can start by, you know, collaborating with others who have their own projects, with their own funding, who, you know, who have things that are set up already. So that, first of all, you get that kind of experience, you know, the onset experience. You see how things really work, you know, in the real world. Uh, and... And then, of course, you have to be, you know, a self-starter. You know, you have to, you know, either find somebody that's a very good writer, you know, to, uh, you know, draft a, a nice story for you to direct. Or if you, you know, have, you know, some of your own ideas that you can naturally write into scripts, um, you can also do that. And that's actually what I, that's what I have been doing and that's what I do. Mm -hmm. um, I, write, I, you, you know, write, I, 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 write yeah. Your script and you direct I, exactly. It. Exactly. I, I've written, you know, a number of scripts and uh, uh, directed a number of them. Uh, some are, uh, you know, acts of evil or Sharia. Uh, uh, and then uh, there was another one that's called uh, uh, Prayer Beads or Papa. It has, you know, two two uh, titles. Uh, the reason actually I, you know, I, I like to direct is that, as you mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, uh, I want to be able to tell our own stories from our, our own, you know, perspectives, uh, simply because, you know, uh, lots of people in Hollywood tend to write, it's, it's, it's become like a popular thing, you know what I mean, to, you know, inject some of, let's say, the Middle East or the Arab world or, you know what I mean, or the complex, you know, that are taking place, sadly, over there, uh, to, you know, to spice up, you know what I mean, a story, you know what I mean, the, the, the unfortunate thing is, I mean, Everybody is free, you know what I mean, to uh, to talk about anything they want. The thing is, at least inform yourself, you know, about the realities on the ground and about the culture of the people and how they think and, and why they're into this or that, you know, before writing about it. Uh, so the main idea for me is to write stories and tell them from our perspectives as opposed to letting somebody else, you know, tell our stories and, you know what I mean, get it completely. <clears throat> One of the venues uh, that is available to you as an independent uh, filmmaker is festival. Sure, correct. And uh, my experience, we have here uh, two, three, four major festival in uh, in our area, Midwest International Film Festival. You know, probably a hundred different films from whatever. And sure. 
and also we have the Arab Film Festival. Uh, there is a film, the Brink film. There is, there is something about the Arab film, they make it through the festival. It shows something, uh, also another stereotyping, you know, oppressed the Muslim woman, uh, terrorism, and all of that. And even that is when, true. Uh, when sure. Um, well, first of all, uh, you know, when I write stories personally, I, you know, uh, my goal is to, as I said, you know, tell uh, at least partly an Arab story, you know, uh, or, you know, inject into, the, you know, this idea, uh, an Arab perspective. Uh, because, of course, if, you know, if I'm, I'm, I'm making films and I'm dismissing my own, you know, views on the world, then there's, you know, there's no meaning for me to be, you know, in this industry, you know, whatsoever, you know. Uh, so what I try to do is really uh, show, you know, the human face, you know, of Arabs in general, you know, that we are actually regular people uh, who have, you know, regular lives, who have hopes, you know, who have aspirations and who want to thrive, you know what I mean, in, in the world. Of course, we also have our, our share of, you know, worries and concerns and problems and, and issues, and, and we have to deal with that. Um, so to be frank with you, I, you know, I don't necessarily think that much about, uh, oh, you know what, this festival, you know what I mean, maybe will or will not accept this film specifically because I'm talking about that. Because I think if I, if I start thinking in those terms, I'm going to limit myself to a point that's... Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to limit myself and I'm, I'm even going to be, I think, unable to, to write, you know. Uh, so I don't really think about the festivals or anything like that. But it is indeed, as you were saying, and that's something I, I you know, that I confirm. Uh, it is indeed a problem, you know, uh, for some film festivals, you know, to include a film that, oh, you know what, this is really not mainstream. You know, they, I mean, they look at it and this is really not mainstream. That brings me to another point. Or another, you know, another important thing that that, that that's worth mentioning. Um, I think that Arabs uh, are not invested enough in, of course, uh, uh, film and TV and the media in general. And I think it's it's really overdue that we really start paying attention, you know, to creating our own little industry, film industry, starting to support our own filmmakers. You know what I mean? Uh, in, in so many different ways, you know, creating funds, you know what I mean, and scholarships and, uh, uh, you know, awards, you know, uh, that, that would, you know what I mean, accompany, you know, young filmmakers uh, and people who are actually aspiring to go into a film uh, uh, to actually create, you know what I mean, and make films and create little maybe maybe uh, 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 webisodes and, uh, you know, things of that nature that we can actually show, you know what I mean, this, this society that we live in and we're for, fully part of who we are. Uh, so I think it's really important that we start paying attention to those things. Um, uh, one, you know, one thing that happened in the past probably three, four months as we were actually raising funds for this upcoming film that we're making in about a month. Um, you know, we created a few, you know, a few uh, uh, campaigns, you know, fundraising campaigns online, you, obviously. You use cloud uh, funding, don't you? We actually, we actually used a, a, a platform uh, that's called um, Launch Good. I was actually advised by someone, you know, they said, oh, you know what, there are lots of Arabs that hang out there, you know what I mean, just just put it on there, and you're going to you're gonna have lots of money for your film, you know. So in any case, so, so we, you know, we launched this campaign, and, you know, we started, you know, we started with a, a, a uh, this figure of like $100,000 to, you know, because $100,000 in Hollywood is nothing, you know, to make a film, it's nothing. Get you to the door. Yeah, I mean that's yeah, that's what you pay your DP, you know what I mean for. Uh, but um, yeah. so we put this figure and we said, okay, we're going to make this film on a very small budget. Hundred thousand should be, you know, doable. And you know, believe it or not, we, you know, uh, we did not raise, we did not raise over two thousand dollars, you know, in a period of two months, My you goodness. know. Yeah. So uh, I mean, that's not good. It's, of course, it's, it's really sad. Specifically, that sad. as we were we as we were doing that as we were doing that during that period, 
a number of things happened, you know, around the world. You know, you had, you know, the the uh, the, the attack in, in Nice, you know, in France. You had the attack in, in Orlando, Florida, and you had other, you know, other things that took place. And you see a number of, you know, activists, you know, Arab and you know, Muslim activists, and this and that. And I mean, God bless them. You know, I'm not, I'm not trying to. They want to build more. They want to build exactly, mosque. exactly. You know what I mean? Just you know, oh, you know what? Uh, you know, we're we're good people, and this and that. We're trying to remind you, we're anti this, we're anti that. We're not, you know, we're we're not, you know, pro violence. We're not pro this. We're not pro that. And and exactly. you know, honestly, that. part uh, of me wanted to say people do not care what you write on me, right? Twitter no. and what you you know tell them. You know what I mean? Uh, in a Facebook, give me just a quick second here. Post. People, you know what I mean, care about what they see. You know, when they see a story about you and about your culture and. So that's actually the type of mentality we need to change. Sure stories. Uh, and and sure. I think, uh, you know, one of the films that won a lot of uh, uh, prizes, uh, Sharia, you know, it was Sharia, okay, and right. all of that. So tell us a little bit about the film, because this is very interesting. You know, Thank I you. know I know your story with uh, Iraqi and uh, American myth that you sure. like a reverse road. That's you know, right. You know, and you know this guy was invading and killing, and now he is, you know, has issue and need help. And also in that Sharia, also a reverse role. And I like it that. Is. Um, uh, sharia really is, as you said, a re you know, reverse roles. Uh, uh, you know, within these two two characters who are a couple basically. Uh, so Sofian, his name in, in you know in, in the film is Sofian. Sofian actually immigrates from somewhere in the Arab world. I didn't really want to say yeah. where, yeah. you know. Um, uh, so he immigrates from somewhere in the Arab world, and he does not want to have anything to do with his religion and traditions and nice. you know customs I, anymore. You see a few of those too. <laughs> yeah, same here. Oh, okay, some more. You know, with his past, and so he wants to live an American life. You know, uh, as you mentioned, I think there are plenty. You know, I mean, of, of you know people who immigrate. You know, I mean, from other you know parts of the world, from the Arab world, and who just want to live you know differently. And so he ends up marrying this girl, you know, this, this all-American girl, that, uh, so Islam, not, not under his, his influence or anything like that, yeah, yeah. simply because she'd been maybe doing research about it or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only does she, you know, convert, but she, she would want him to actually uh, start helping her learn about this religion and practice in this religion, which creates a major problem for him because, you know, you leave an entire country not to deal with that. And then you find, you know, that same religion waiting for you in your new home. You know, it's, it's really interesting. Yeah, Sofian. And Sofian, uh, he better off go and, uh, and act like a terrorist in an American movie. Well, that's exactly. <laughs> that's right. So, you know, so what happened is... Um, he finds himself in this very difficult position because this is, you know, the woman he loves, you know, his wife. He wants to spend the rest of his life, you know, with her. And then she breaks the news to him, you know, uh, you know that she, she, she's converting, you know, to, to Islam. And so simply not to lose her or not to, you know what I mean, to uh, maybe disappoint her because we find out later that uh, she did lots of good things, you know what I mean, for him before then. Uh, so simply not to lose her, he acts like he is supportive. You know, and so, but it's just an act, you know what I mean, yeah. that, that's his footing, you know, and, and uh, little by little, actually, tensions mount as she, like, she goes a little deeper into religion, and she starts imposing things on him, you know, uh, and, and basically, the story is kind of like this couple dealing with that, you know, uh, but of course, it has a very nice, uh, uh, you know, message of, Tolerance and peace, you know what I mean, towards the end. It, it, um, it's interesting that, uh, in a very strange way, the both were uh, motivated by the same thing, you know. They were the, right. the partial from their own uh, culture, and they want to explore something else, but uh, they met in a, in a different time and different... Uh, that's different, right. And, and that, but that's, uh, you know, very different than uh, what we... What we see in a, in, a, in a mainstream uh, films, uh, where uh, things very predictable, stereotyping, and all of that. So th this is the thing about how the West, and this is started from Europe, Orientalist, and all of this. Sure. They kind of uh, portray Arabs as a cartoonish, uh, simple-minded, uh, uh, you know, kind of. Uh, uh, we don't get into this complexity of Arab. 
uh, personality and Arab mind, and that's Correct. what you bring in your films. And uh, you know, we are just more than just uh, people who wants to you know jihad, whatever. Islam. That's right. Very complicated uh, human being, like you know, like everyone. So. So you know, and 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 the name of the film, you know, you're taking a lot of risk coming up with true. the name of very the film. true. Tell us very about true. The naming the film. <clears throat> sure, the you know the main idea you know behind naming the film Sharia, uh, with all respect, you know, to you know the holiness of every single religion, um, the main reason behind naming it Sharia simply because um, uh, when Heather in the film. You know, that's the name actually of the, the you know, the character who plays, uh, you know, Sofiane's wife. Heather actually, during her research, she finds out about, oh, Sharia law, you know, the law of Islam, you know, something like that, you know. And as she breaks the news, you know, to her husband that she's converting to this, you know, new religion, you know, she tells him, you know what, from now on, we're going to start living our lives according to Sharia law. And that's basically what sets the story and the film in motion. Yeah. That's the main. Yeah. That's the main reason, actually. Uh, exactly. That's the main reason why it was, you know, it was titled or called Sharia, simply because, uh, you know, we know that uh, there is a great, you know, misinterpretation and, uh, you know, twisting. You know what I mean? Of not only the word, you know what I mean, Sharia, but also of the concept itself, you know what I mean, by people who are like, you know, extremely religious and so on and so forth. Um, and so using that word, I thought, would be very symbolic, you know what I mean, uh, to, you know, to, to feature what actually, what this story is all about. It's because she's bringing in, you know, this sharia, you know, between the couple that all hell breaks loose, <laughs> you know? And also, uh, sharia also has a, a different uh, meaning than the religious one, you know. It's, correct, it has a true. cultural meaning, uh, sharia between two people, couple. So th in that true. frame, and that's how, how I saw you, I didn't see the whole film, but I saw, I read about it, and I saw the mm -hmm. trailer, and uh, that's I, 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 you know, I see a conversation between her and her husband, and he was very sure. surprised uh, of what her intention is to bring him to back to Islam. And uh, he looked at it as just, yeah, yeah, I'm not gonna go to that Sharia that we hear it in the mosque and and, right, and, right. and, and ayatollahs and all of this. Right, exactly. And, yeah, and sure. I'm gonna go Sharia between me and her as my wife, and, and mm -hmm. that's that was his the pretense. I'm gonna pretend. And I think he was driven by keeping their relationship going. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Uh, we actually end up, you know, you know, finding out or discovering as as the story, you know, moves forward that uh, uh, Sofian actually had major, you know, uh, alcohol and drug problems before, you know, his wife converted, and so basically she, you know, she stood by him and she helped him get, you know, cleaned up, you know, through rehab and. Things of that nature, you know what I mean. Yeah. So it was almost like a big favor that he had to return, accepting actually to teach her and to show her those things. But again, you know, what's what's kind of like comedic, you know what I mean, about what happened, you know, uh, uh, is that this guy never really practiced religion, even when he was back home, you know. So he was like making up stuff, you know what I mean, <laughs> simply to, you know, to appear like he was returning the favor, you know, That's to a his typical wife. Arab, and what is a typical Arab? <laughs> Exactly. We make, we exactly. make up stuff as we go along. That's but, right, exactly. I, you know, I, I think we. Do you think we are now Arab American, Muslim American now, uh, confident enough to come up with this type of film, type of story that we actually uh, talk about own uh, problems and all, uh, you know, also, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, are we there yet? I don't think we are, uh, you know, with all due respect. And of course, I, I, you know, I don't know everybody and I don't know every single institution that would screen, you know what I mean, this kind of films. Yeah. But uh, I really don't think we are uh, simply because um, I think we are in that state of mind where any critique, you know, regardless of where and who it comes from, you know, even if it's, you know, from somebody who is Arab, you know what I mean, just like us, any critique is taken as an offense, you know, is taken as, you know, we're on, on the defensive all the time. For a long, and for when, a long time, too, you know. We, we'll be yeah, exactly. For a long time.
Correct. And so, you know, when you're on the defensive, you know, I mean, like all the time and, you know, you, you tend not to accept any any critique, you know, and uh, uh, with film, you know, film, of course, is, is entertaining as and it's it can be artful. It can be, you know, uh, funny. It can be all kinds of things. Uh, but of course, it's also meant to educate in a certain way or actually feature, you know, let's say a specific issue or specific problem. And so um, I don't really think that we are uh, uh, or we have that kind of state of mind where, you know, we can, you know, see ourselves, you know, in, in a film or see, you know, characters that look like us and maybe see those characters address issues that are taboo, you know, I mean, for, for us. Uh, I remember, and I'll just finish with this, if you don't mind. Uh, I remember actually a few institutions that wanted to actually screen, you know, Sharia. And these are Arab institutions, Arab American institutions. And so they, you know, they said, okay, well, you know, we heard about this film, this and that, and would it be possible, you know, for us to, you know, to screen it, you know what I mean, for, you know, our members or our audiences and this and that. And, and I said, of course, you know, uh, and I was willing to let them screen it actually for free, mm-hmm. you know, so no, you know, no issues there. Exactly. You know, uh, and so they, screen, they, they actually review the film, first of all, before they screen it to the general public, they review the film. And then they come back to me and they, you know, and they tell me, oh, you know what? Uh, I don't think that our, our, our audiences would be happy with, with this kind of, you know what I mean? With- uh, your last project now, you're working on the battle, you know, this is, the, you know, uh, the, the story between the Iraqi and, uh, and uh, <coughs> how far is this done or how far are you in this? We're actually, we're actually uh, uh, starting production in December. So we haven't shot the film yet, but we are going to do it in December. We're holding, uh, uh, you know, casting um, or auditions uh, in early November. Uh, so we're going to cast our, our characters and so on. And so, you know, we'll start, you know, principal photography in uh, December. There'll be somebody out of job in December. He might have, a, a, you know, get an audition. Uh, President Clinton, uh, President Obama. <laughs> sure, sure. He would be out of sure. job in December. Would you have? That's uh, right. Would you have a role for him? But uh, I'll, I'll actually <laughs> gladly, I'll, I'll gladly cast him as a U.S. veteran of the White House. You know, Anwar Ismail, you know, a, a filmmaker and director and uh, an Arab American that try to tell uh, Arab stories and uh, complicated. Stories. You know, thank you so much. Thank you, and uh, good luck. And we'll be talking to you soon. 